is Lugard, an amalgamation of 1914, the problem with Nigeria. Sir John Diltree Frederick Lugard was sent to this land to do a job. Lugard did his job very well and left Nigeria in 1919, that is, about 103 years ago. Lugard remains one of the most vilified colonial officials in Nigeria. But the sea or the amalgamation of 1914 to be blamed for the socio-economic and political challenges as well as the issues of nationhood affecting the country Nigeria today. Let's find out in this video. Hello, hello, hello Hisplas. Welcome back to Hispool Media. Gabriel here. If you are new here, consider subscribing and enable notifications so you will not miss any of our new videos. Thank you. Frederick Lugard was born in Midras, now Chennai, in India on the 22nd of January 1858. Sir Frederick Lugard was a British soldier, missionary, explorer of Africa and colonial administrator. He was the first High Commissioner of Nigeria from 1900 to 1906, the last Governor of Southern Nigeria and Northern Nigerian Protectorate from 1912 to 1914 and the first Governor-General of Nigeria from 1914 to 1919. He was educated at Rosal Schools and the Royal Military College in Sandhurst. Lugard was commissioned into the Knightfoot East Norfolk Regiment in 1878 and joined the 2nd Battalion in India. He served in the 2nd Anglo-Afghan War of 1878 and 1880 the Sudan Campaign of 1884 and 1885 and the Third anglo bombings War of November 1885 and was awarded the Distinguished Service Order in 1887. After this promising start, his career was derailed when he fell in love with a twice-married British divorcee he met in India. Learning she had been injured in an accident, he abandoned his post in Burma to join her in Lucknow, then followed her to England. When she rejected him, Lugard decided to make a fresh start in Africa. In 1894, Lugard was dispatched by the Royal Niger Company to Bogu, where he secured treaties with the kings and chiefs who acknowledged the sovereignty of the British Company, while reducing the influence of other colonial powers. From 1896 to 1897, Lugard took charge of an expedition to Lake Ngami in modern-day Botswana on behalf of the British West Chatterland Company. He was recalled from Ngami by the British government and sent to West Africa, where he was commissioned to raise a native force to protect British interest in the hinterland of the Lagos colony and Nigeria against French aggression. In August 1897, Lugard organized the West African Frontier Force and commanded it until the end of December 1899, when the dispute with France were settled. After relinquishing command of the West African Frontier Force, Lugard was appointed High Commissioner of the newly created Protectorate of Northern Nigeria. He was present at Mount Pathy in Lokoja and read the proclamation that established the Protectorate on the 1st of January 1900. After that time, the portion of Northern Nigeria under effective control was small, and Lugard's tax in organizing this vast territory was made more difficult by the refusal of the Sultan of Sokoto and many other fuller princesses to fulfill their treaty obligations. In 1903, British control over the whole protectorate was made possible by a successful campaign against the Emir of Kanu and the Sultan of Sokoto. By the time Lugard resigned as commissioner in 1906, the entire region of what would eventually be transformed into modern-day Nigeria was being peacefully administered under the supervision of British residents. He restored peace and order and suppressed Fulani despotism. Lugard also stopped slave raiding and abolished slavery and the slave trade and would begin the development of the country by getting it surveyed, mapped and improved transport and communications networks. He also reorganized the transaction system. Lugard is most importantly remembered for his political system of rule which was practiced in Nigeria called indirect rule, particularly in Ebola. 
And of course, if you are enjoying this video, please boop the like button. It will go a long way to help us. Thank you. By 1912, the government in the Northern and Southern Protectorate were established. However, the need for a better and more efficient and organized form of administration for the entire nation was growing. Although controversial in Lagos, where it was opposed by a large section of the political class and the media, the amalgamation did not arouse passion in the rest of the country because the people were unaware of the implications. One of those who advocated for bringing the North and the South together was Edmond Dene Morel. In his opinion, the development of the entire nation would be hampered if the North and the South remained two separate territories. For instance, the South, which owned the seaboard, benefited from custom duties imposed on trade with the North. Morel advocated a greater Nigerian involvement in government and better education for Nigerians, arguing that the current policies practiced by Britain in the country must produce unhappiness and unrest. As a result of its economic hardship, the North was forced to depend on financial aid from British Treasury. In the near and distant future, the Union of the North and the South would improve the nation's financial management and reduce financial burden on British Treasury. According to Morel, the amalgamation of the two regions will lead to a better and more efficient administration as well as a more sensible division of the entire nation into provinces. According to this plan, Lagos would be run by a resident while a lieutenant governor would oversee each province. The governor general would serve as a chief executive. Consequently, Sir Frederick Lugard was invited to return to Nigeria to complete the amalgamation process. In 1913, he presented his own suggestions to the British government. Lugard was then appointed as the first governor general when the southern and northern Nigeria were amalgamated in 1914. The deliberate extension of the native administration's emirate philosophy to the south was one of the most important consequences of the amalgamation. The Northern Court Ordinance enacted in 1914 was thus applied throughout the newly amalgamated country. Second, the Northern Ordinance of 1916, on the other hand, extended native administration to the south. The Northern Native Revenue Ordinance was also implemented in the West in 1916 and in the East in 1928. The division of the country into the North and South was retained for administrative purposes and in order to simplify the duties of lieutenant governors. This new arrangement means that the Governor General was given most of the functions that were previously not assigned to him, both in the North and the South. The Governor General oversaw the entire government under this arrangement with an executive council advising him. The residents assisted the lieutenant governor, who in turn assisted the governor general. Residents were assisted by district officers, who were assisted by native district heads in performing all the dignified native ceremonies. In this arrangement, the emirs and native district heads received genuine self-government training and new responsibilities. Funding of the colony of Nigeria in the development of state infrastructures such as harbor, railways, and hospitals in southern Nigeria came from revenue generated by taxes on imported alcohol. In northern Nigeria, the revenue that allowed state development project was less because the taxes were absent and thus funding of project was covered from revenue generated in the south. Regardless of his contribution, Lugard's work was not without flaws. He intended to establish one administrative unit in Nigeria, but not a Nigerian nation. Instead, his policy of isolating the North from the South, which his successors sustained, played a role in Nigeria's current disunity. One example of this policy is the exclusion of the North from the Legislative Council until 1947. Thus, it can be said that Lugard sowed the seed of separatist tendencies that have plagued Nigeria's unity to this day. Lugard was also partly responsible for the North's backwardness in education and other social services, which explained the South's educational advantage over the North. 
To summarize, Lugard's attitude towards Nigeria implied that he did not envision Nigeria gaining self-governance. He envisioned permanent British colonialism. His administrative system of indirect rule, hostility towards educated Nigerians in the South, and his education system for the North that aimed to train the sons of chiefs and emirs as clerks and interpreters revealed him to be an arch-imperialist of the British Empire. Even though Lord Luga remained one of the most vilified colonial officers in Nigeria, can we say he is the cause of the problems of Nigeria today? Well, Nigeria has been plagued by worse internal colonialist afflictions than at any time since his departure. This manifested itself in the form of soldiers in glittering military appellates, civilians in Babariga and Agbada who are worse than Lugard and who watch as Nigeria gradually collapse to this day. Since 1960, these Nigerians shared resources among themselves without considering the survival of the nation. Corruption, wastefulness, lack of vision, inter-ethnic mistrust, and other ills continue to condone on a grand scale. If Nigerian leaders were as half-heartedly committed to duty and half-heartedly dedicated to the ideals of the opposition as Lugard was, Nigeria would not be in this predicament. It is therefore an escapist strategy and even silly to continue to blame a man who loved Nigeria to have it more than a century ago for the wars of today. So, do you think Lugard and amalgamation is the problem of this country? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. For more videos on our colonial era, please check the video displayed here or the playlist here. Don't forget to like this video, share with friends and family on social media, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.